Nathan. This is at Odd Show. Please listen. Forget what you learned in school. Never mind what your parents told you, and disregard what your friends say. From now on, the only From people now on, you need to listen to, to are these guys. Are these guys? For the next several minutes, they'll take you on a journey through the political jungle. And when your journey is over and you're safe at home, they promise you'll be stronger, smarter, and just plain better. So buckle up, hang on to your ears. Because your journey starts now. 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 Because people have got to know whether or not their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. Hey, welcome to the Ad Odd Show. We're going to take you on another enjoyable journey through the what? Political jungle? Might as well. I think so. You got to join your guides, Brian and... And Nate. Yeah. Uh, we're broadcasting from the back room of the Crystal Ball and Prism Bar and Studio. Hmm. In a small town in what country, Nate? China. 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 Hong Kong, specifically. We had to, we had to go through a lot of red tape to be able to broadcast from Hong Kong. Do you know why the it. tape's red? Yeah, I do. Communism. No, that's not it at all. Also, uh, well, I, we're, 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 we're at, okay. I, I just wanted to point out, we're in the bar and grill behind the hotel room where uh, Snowden? Snowden has a room, yeah. Edward Snowden. Well, and I want people to realize the clever uh, name of the uh, bar and grill, the crystal ball in PRISM, P-R-I-S-M. If you don't know what that means, you haven't been paying attention but somebody is paying attention to you. I've mentioned, uh, I've mentioned this before, Brian. That if you have to explain your jokes, maybe not you're flying. not hitting the mark. Right. I do hey, real quick well, before we get into anything. Uh, okay. I want to say hello to our new listen. Well, our, our newly found listeners. They're not new listeners. I found out they've been with us a long time. Um, Barack Hussein Obama, uh-huh. Eric Holder, yeah. Um, James Clapper. I just want to say hello to those people. And all the gang they, at the NSA. They've been listening. Yeah, the whole gang at the NSA. Yeah. You guys rock. Thanks for listening. We want to say that today is uh, June 13th, 2013. We'll be discussing the human genes. Uh, we'll continue to talk about the indoctrination of school kids and a lot more. So uh, stay tuned. And remember, we are a call and talk show. Please call in at 248-455-ODDS. That's 248-455-6337. Yeah, facebook.com slash at odd show. Of course, you're already on at oddshow.com listening live here Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Remember that Nate and I wrote a book. It's hard to believe. We did. And we got it published. It's called My Parents Open Carry. Suckers. It's a great kid's book. Ages, uh, oh, I don't know, 10 and up. Even adults uh, seem to enjoy it. You can go to myparentsopencarry.com. It's about a uh, day in the life of Brenna and uh, her parents who open carry handguns to protect themselves and uh, Brenna. And it's a great platform to discuss the uh, idea of self-defense, uh, the Second Amendment, open carry and concealed carry, gun safety, and it ends with a reward. It's a great kid's book, myparentsopencarry.com. Hey, you know what? I don't. I've I've just I've recently discovered that I'm a genius. Huh. Now, some people <laughs> may disagree with that, but I, I I can't think of any more less than Yes. You're right. Yeah. Some people might disagree. I am a genius. Yeah. And I found that I'm not appreciated while I'm alive. Yeah. And I th- did some research on famous geniuses throughout history, mm-hmm. and most of them weren't appreciated until after they were dead. Oh, and I think I fall in that category because no one appreciates me now that I'm alive. Yeah, and I can think of a handful of people. Yes, and this is a very big hand. Uh huh. That that they'll probably appreciate you after you're dead. Yeah, 
Oh, you think there'd be people that would there, appreciate there me be. after I'm dead? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, so. I'm, I'm thinking of my wife and daughter. I don't know if they'll appreciate you as much as the situation. You know, the environment. I'm not I'm not following. Well, I mean No, I don't get it. I don't either. Maybe I'm maybe I'm not a genius. <laughs> you might not. But be. anyways, what I, I'm saying is I am a freaking genius. My whole life up till now is genius uh-huh, and uh-huh. I'm not going to be in, uh, appreciated until after I'm dead. Well, what do you, you think what? of that? Well, I do appreciate that a little bit. He was right. Anyway, we can get on with the show now since, well, it's quiet in here. and Surprisingly, it doesn't smell as bad as it used to, which really blows my mind. Things usually don't get better smelling with, with that state of mind, but apparently Brian did, so. Ooh, I'm the ghost oh, of Brian. Ooh. I, this, this has taken a turn, and it's not not what I intended. I'm here and we'll be on at odds for all eternity. <laughs> and I have an announcement to make. This oh, at no. odds <laughs> last night ever. <laughs> you may no, be right. we'll be around for a long time. You guys will have to stick up with us for yeah. at least one more week. <laughs> really? Right? One yeah. more week? Yeah, I think that, so. We, we got the bills paid up until then. You mentioned jeans earlier, and I just wanted to show you I am wearing some blue jeans. Yeah, and I'm going to say that your jeans are protected. The U.S. Supreme Court has uh, ruled that your jeans cannot be patented, no matter how spangled they are. I think now, your jeans have juicy spangled across the back I actually think end. Levi has a patent on my jeans. Oh, they probably do, because they're riveted for your pleasure. Right. No, really, we're not talking about those kinds of jeans, are we? Oh, with a G. Like jeans How else Simmons. would you spell it? With an R. With an R? How can... Where, where are you going with that? I don't know. It's French. <laughs> well, <laughs> tickling. Oh, anyways. Uh, yeah, the U.S. Supreme Court has come out and said that naturally occurring human genes are not patentable. And I think that makes good sense. I mean, it's naturally occurring. It's uh, in line with other decisions that have been made as far as... Uh, patenting, uh, discovering uh, natural phenomenon and things like that. The human gene is uh, naturally occurring, but it left the door open for synthetic genes. Now, you can copy and create synthetic molecules of human genes, and those could be patented, at least the methodology. Uh, And certainly the tests uh, for certain risks of certain illnesses, cancers, etc., cetera, uh, can be patented. Um, I think that's a good thing, don't you? I just wish that the sure. uh, uh, the federal government would uh, realize that uh, our DNA is uh, private property and they can't collect it like they what do now. What are you now. talking about? I mean, <laughs> if you get arrested, they're yeah, just going yeah. to... Co- you can't patent it. Yeah. So they can collect it. Yeah, that was the other thing they said. Uh, yeah, they can collect your DNA uh, even if you're arrested for whatever. Yeah. You know, Joe Blow uh, thinks that you're fooling around with his girlfriend and he arrests you. Now your DNA is in a national database. Yeah, what about That's a citizen's wrong. arrest? Can I arrest citizens you? Arrest, and then, citizens and then take arrest. Arrest. <laughs> and take citizens your DNA. arrest. Gomer Powell. Yeah. Um, what we don't need is another unelected politician just sitting around in Congress, whether it's in the Senate or the House of Representatives. Mm-mm-mm. Take it from my man, the love gov. When he sits around the House of Representatives, he really sits around the House of Representatives. Of Jimmy course. Jimmy Fallon. That was that was Chris Christie, yeah, the slow governor of the news, the Jersey of New Jersey. He's going to give that state a big election. And what you, <laughs> a great big election. <laughs> it's going to be a long this, hard journey. Now, what you said earlier was uh, not on the show, but in private. Um, you know, when we were cuddling, um, <laughs> you're, you're not you're not denying that. Uh, I you am, think you think this might be his, you know, uh, 
introduction into running uh, oh, for president. This is de facto proof that he will be running for president. De facto? De facto. I do not think you know what that word means. <laughs> <laughs> mm. He, he yeah. What? what happens is is celebrity presidents yeah. like this gigantic governor from New Jersey <laughs> or President Wannabes, they the go on Jimmy Fallon and they gigantic. slow jam the news. Now come on, that's do a fat you, joke. He's getting smaller. Yeah. Do you think know. do you think he did better than Barack Obama did when Barack Obama slow jammed the news? I well, don't I don't know. Barack's pretty cool guy. Yeah, and that's the thing. And Chris Christie He's just is a white good, guy. He's good just a fat white friends. guy. So good of friends that they can hold each other on the beach. For minutes at a time. You know, I saw that picture where they were holding hands and watching the sunset. Mm -hmm. You can't watch the sunset in the Jersey Shore. (laughs) I don't know how they did that. (laughs) (laughs) See, that's on the East Coast, Nathan. Genius, right? You are a genius. Genius. You you picked right up on that one. I am a genius. No, I think, uh, and I'm going to say it again. I'm not going to stop saying it. We're going to see a very tough Democratic primary in 2016. For the presidential election, I think if Hillary Clinton can get over the boo boo that she got on you her think head, she can beat uh, Chris Christie. Chris Christie for what, the Democratic. What did, what did he call him? Crispy Cream Christie. Yeah, Crispy Cream Christie. Yeah, I think <laughs> there were a lot of fat jokes. That's all I know. Uh, so, oh, thank you. Our our assistant just brought in a lamp for us, and I'm not really sure why. I don't think that's a lamp. <laughs> it's a lava lamp, and it looks very. Uh, no, it's good. But no, I he, he's going to run for president for sure. He's going to be in I the primary with people who are actually decent like Ted Cruz, and Rand Paul. I don't think he will. And other people who are just like him and pretend like they're conservative and then they're not like Marco Rubio. Well, I I had a I had a talk with a coworker um yesterday about that and he thought Chris Christie was going to appeal to the independents and the moderates and that he might have a chance uh, in a presidential election. Yeah, what's really unfortunate is I think I think he that might right. be the case. Yeah. I think so. And I, I'm i dreading that day when it comes down to the vote in, in the regular election between Chris Christie and somebody like Hillary Clinton or... Well, do uh, uh, you, you really think Hillary's going to... She's got get, a Twitter account now. You know, she's really popular. Although I, I did see that she can't... Uh, she probably will not run for president because her Twitter bio does not have the word God in it. So well, therefore she cannot run. I think for I have president. to go through my friends list on my Facebook page because there's some friends that I have that really think that Hillary Clinton walks on water and can mm-hmm. do no wrong. That's the problem. And I, I think, my God, what a, I just, what a I just thing. think her head injury, you know, she bumped her head. Do you remember that? And she forgot everything that she had ever done in her life. I don't think that's going to serve her well in an election or, Maybe it will serve her just fine. I don't remember. At this point, well, what difference does I, it make? I think history has shown that you don't need to have a brain to be president President of the United States. Oh, since States. you brought that up, I want to I skip ahead here. Oh. Uh, there was a report that some legislators and their aides are threatening to quit and leave Washington, D.C. Why? Because, why? 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 Because Tell their me. little waiver thing expires and they will actually have to... To be subject to Obamacare oh, in 2014. Oh, say it ain't so. And they're making over a hundred grand a year, and they say they can't afford Obamacare. Yeah, what about the poor guy that's making you know twelve thousand a year? Yeah, and I hope that that's what it comes to is that people say this: you're making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and you can't afford it. I make forty thousand a year, and you think I can afford it? I mean, I really hope that's what this comes to. I don't know if it will be. I don't know because I think it'll get swept under the rug and they'll just be crazy, you know, uh, crazy people and whatever. And eh. well, there's going to have to be modifications to this. We we don't know. There are certain flaws that uh, exist yeah. with oh, this bill. Oh, that's exactly and, it. They're trying to fix it with and, administrative and efforts. We don't know exactly what's in the bill until we pass it. Yeah, thank you, and Nancy. Then, and then we're going to run it out there and see. Uh, but you see s- who salutes. You it. said you don't have to have a brain to run for president. The article I was that's reading true. said that. There's worries that this will be a great brain drain from the D.C. area if all of these people quit. Like, I'm supposed to give a damn if they quit. Like, oh, please don't quit. We need you there doing things. I'm not seeing much of a <laughs> brain anything in Washington, D.C. But No, not no, if, not the ones that are working there if anyway. I think there's a drain there. I think it's a good thing. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, boy. All right, we'll take our, our first break real quick here. When we come back, I definitely want to talk about immigration. Marco Aww. Rubio. Marco Rubio, he makes promises and then he, changes his mind, and then he, he tries wish, to tell you he's that he didn't and change his mind. And there's a candidate that might be running. That's, for, that's what I'm thinking. I yeah, think he might be a good so. one. But we will discuss that when we get back. You're, You're listening, listening to the At Odd Show with Nate and Brian. The voice of American conservatism. WRS Digital. Red State Talk Radio. Fact. U.S. credit card debt is eight times larger than it was 30 years ago. No wonder you and I are feeling the credit card crunch. You're not alone. Increasing prices and the costs of credit are stretching budgets and preventing people just like us from getting ahead or just catching up with our debts. At American Financial Debt Relief, we can help. We have tested ways to help you get out of debt. Find out how now. The call is free to learn more. If you qualify, we can reduce your interest, show you how to stop your debt from getting larger, and help you get out of debt faster than you can by making minimum payments. So if you're falling behind on your credit cards or medical bills, give us a call right now, where a free five-minute call can change your life. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Reduce your credit card debt. Call now. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Real radio for real Americans. Red State Talk Radio. Veritech is a publicly traded company that has created the first biotech social network. Founded by Dr. Kevin Buckman, the company has built a unique platform that will allow biotech research to become open-sourced for the first time in history. Veritech is also co-developing a breath-testing device that plugs into a cell phone for data transmission. The technology was originally designed by NASA, and Veritech is working on adapting the device to detect infectious diseases and cancer. Veritech Social Network for Cancer Patients, www.cancer.im, provides a central location where those affected by the disease can seek alternative treatments, organize their records, and find support. A breakthrough company in the biotech industry, Veritech is publicly held, meaning anyone can become a shareholder of the company. The trading symbol is Vera, spelled V-I-R-A. More information about Veritech is available via Yahoo Finance. Just type in the ticker symbol V-I-R-A. And we're back. I'm Brian. And I'm Nate. And he said, and we're and, back. And we're lo- and you are listening to the Ad Odd Show. You don't listen, You don't need to listen to any other show. No, just us. Or no show or, at all. Or a good show. One of the two. You wanted to talk about immigration. <clears throat> yeah, Your buddy, Marchio. Marchio? Remind Mar- you to call in. 248-455-ODDS. 248-455-6337. Marco Rubio, so yeah, something like that. I think Marco he's Rubio. I Marco Rubio, yeah. yeah. Uh, he he's part of this gang of eight. Which what we want in Washington is a gang. are gangs, yeah, especially of eight because those are the worst kind. Yeah, twelve, seven, we can deal with them. Eight, that's a bad number. Yeah, uh, he the the this gang of eight has been working on a, propo- on a proposal for immigration reform. Because what has happened is the Democrats want to broaden their voter base. Ooh, those Democrats. And so what they've done is they've been saying for, well, forever that we need amnesty, amnesty, amnesty. These people are humans. We need to let them in the United States of America. They come here illegally because they want an opportunity. They deserve it. And we have sanctuary cities in in places like California that want to give them health care. And, of course, Obama would love to give them Obamacare. Because they vote. Because they vote now, even illegally. Right. And or, or dead people. Republicans are thinking that they need to jump on this because they think that Hispanics specifically are conservative by nature, which kind of is true. I've went over this many times. I think that's true. It's true, but people will tend to vote for the person that gives them the most stuff. Right. It's the Santa Claus thing that Rush Who, Limbaugh talks and, about. And, and the mommy-daddy. 
your favorite mommy or daddy is Absolutely. the one that gives you everything you want. I hate Absolutely. you, mommy. I love yeah. you, daddy. Yep. I, I hate you, daddy. I love you, mommy. So you have issues. <laughs> Marco Rubio has been saying this. Uh, he, he's been the lead Republican on the, this gang of eight. He's been saying the entire time and asked specifically about it by people like Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh. Are you going to support a bill that does not guarantee the security of our border first? And then let's talk about a pathway to citizenship, if that's necessary, after the border is secure. Well, of course, it's a no-go if border security isn't first. Now, Marco Rubio, he went on Univision, and Univision, one of the few media outlets that will actually ask real questions, and Marco Rubio says, well, what we're going to do is we have to legalize the 11 million that are in the shadows so we know who they are. Then? And then, then we can't secure the border until we know who's here and we legalize them first. Well, I'll tell you who's here. They're not in the shadows. They're sitting at Home Depot waiting for somebody to pick them up to go paint their house. Ooh. On top of that, isn't the NSA spying on every American citizen? Can they not find the ones that are here illegally? Which reminds me. This They're week, not Verizon this, customers? This weekend, I need a, a little paint work done on my siding. Take a quick phone call here and uh, get back to Marco in just one second. Hey. Thanks hey, for calling that out, show. You're on the air. Hello. Who's Hello. this? My name, is Wade. my name is Wade, and I called in to comment about the immigration bill. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Wade. You're on the air. I don't believe that the Hispanic voters are uh, necessarily conservative. If you look at the level of income that they have as a group and the uh, uh, issues in the community with illegitimacy, to very much like other groups in America, they don't fit the profile of a conservative voter. I don't know a single issue that they're... Uh, a strong Republicans on. Well, I'll, and I, go ahead, go ahead. And I don't think they're going to vote Republican because of this bill. Well, they they traditionally have, and I'll tell you, they're conservative because they tend to be strong family oriented. They tend to be very uh, Christian, mostly Catholic. They tend to be religious. They uh, t tend to be hard workers and. Uh, understand you know what it takes to to support the family and all that that used to be the traditional uh, Mexican value and and that's been lost in the last 15 years or so with getting all kinds of you know welfare and, and the propaganda and the ads that are run in Mexico on how to come to the United States and get uh, you know food stamps and get on social benefits and all that kind of stuff but traditionally uh, Hispanic and, and Mexican families have been uh, fairly conservative, and it's sort of been lost in the last few years. What do you, I mean? What do you say about that? Well, I would say that if you were to go to Mexico, you'd find that the church's authority and government is actually very limited, and uh, they do have legal abortion there. And uh, you have to realize you're not getting a cross section of the Mexican population up here. You're getting the people who are having difficulty there. A lot of times, maybe because they lack skill, a large number of them have, that are coming across the border have never finished high school. So their opportunities here, even if they become limited, are somewhat, even if they become legal, are somewhat limited. And uh, I just, uh, I don't see the, the evidence for those uh, voting patterns anywhere that they are made it, where driver's licenses are issued, making it legal to vote, the Republican vote has gone down. Um, the last... Uh, immigration reform we had was 1986, and I don't think uh, California has gone Republican in a national election since then. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I think in uh, 84, I think Reagan got 37% of the Hispanic vote. Amnesty came along in 86, and then H.W. Bush only got about 30% of the Hispanic vote. So his share of the Hispanic vote actually went down. Uh, so I think you're exactly right about that. I think if you we're going to generalize Hispanics. I, I'm thinking traditionally. But traditionally, yeah. I, th I think you're probably right, but you make a great point about which ones of them are leaving their home country right. and coming to the United States, and why are they coming here? It's because they're looking for something better, or because they saw our ads on Mexican television advertising Obamacare and welfare here in the States. Right, and things are better here than they are at home in Mexico. Yeah, well, hey, we you may be right. Well, 
We, go go ahead, Wade. He's, he's in a terrible place. I've been there. It's it's much more economically advanced than than I think most Americans perceive it to be. Um, the uh, they're not as as well off as we are, but I mean they drive cars and live in houses like we do. There are no boroughs wandering around here, or around down there. At least not in the areas I was at. And for the most part, uh, for the more well educated uh, Mexican citizens, they do off they do have opportunities there. So, um, again, I, I saw an article today that uh, they used DNA to solve an old murder in the Ocala State Forest in Florida, and the person they caught confessed to 30 other murders. He was an illegal immigrant. He had come across the border as a, like, a debt collector for the uh, cartels. And um, when you have no security there, you cannot have any control over who's coming and going, and I... I think you get a lot of people who are on the lam from the law down there thinking they're going to come up here and either continue with affairs or start a new life. Yeah, absolutely. So absolutely. I think you're destroying a disproportionate number of troubled people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I'm going to touch on that in a minute. We're going to, I, want to, yeah. I want to thank you for your call, though, Wade. Thanks a lot, Wade. Thanks for listening, yeah, and thanks for your info. Have a good evening. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, you were going to mention that. Some of the, the things we're going to allow. Yeah, the bill as written. And it was another thing that if they're criminals, they will not be allowed legalization here in the United States. The bill, as written, allows for up to three misdemeanors on the yeah, record. Yeah, that's, re- that's ridiculous. And misdemeanors in places like Arizona, theft, arson. And that didn't used to be the case. Things like I mean, that. when we had immigration, you had to have a clean record to get into the, this country. Oh, yeah, for sure. Before the previous big reform, not the 86 amnesty, we, uh, we took people that we needed if there right. was an engineer trying to come in and we had a need for an engineer, we would bring them in. But if we didn't need a general laborer, we wouldn't let them in this country because they didn't really benefit society here. And I think they were rejected if they had a criminal background. Oh, absolutely. But it, And the other thing is that the Secretary of Homeland Security can waive any of these limitations. So you know that's going to happen. I mean, what, what do we do? We had illegals in jail and we just let them loose because of the sequester, sequester, sequester. You know, we have uh, your notes here are up to three misdemeanors. I mean, th- there are a lot of jobs in this country where you will lose your job if you have or get a misdemeanor while you're working. Yeah. And we're going to uh, let, uh, you know, immigrants in here with three Absolutely. misdemeanors? Come the re- on. The reason we're really talking about this is the Senate just recently voted to move forward on this legislation to allow debate and and, and the grassley like what well no the, the chuck grassley uh, submitted an amendment okay. I, I think a decent amendment i didn't read it but in general it seemed good what it would do was delay the pathway to citizenship the yeah. amnesty portion yeah. of this delay it until the border had been secure for six months how do you how do you determine that well that's the thing Rand paul has an amendment that the Congress would have to vote, I think, every year, every five years, on whether they think the border's secure. The problem with that is Ugh. a lot of Democrats today I don't know would vote it. that it was secure. But what do you Certainly. do? What do you do? My solution it's subjective. How do you My do solution that? is secure the border by enforcing laws we have. Because who thinks that we're going to pass new laws and anybody's going to stick to them? If our current administration isn't willing to enforce the laws that we have on the books today... Why would you think that they're going to do it in the future? And here's the thing. These are, un, you know, you don't call them undocumented, you know, aliens. These are illegal aliens. These people are here are already criminals. They've already broken our law. Federal yes. law. They are already felons. Right. According to U.S. law. It, did you see the petition and, and the ruling that they were trying to get? to stop using the word illegal during debate mm-hmm, because it's mm-hmm. highly offensive. Mm-hmm. Call them undocumented. Well, they're undocumented and also illegal. Yeah. You know, uh, arose by any other name. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there is some good news to this. There are several there Republicans. Is? Well, not really. There there are some good upstanding people in the Senate and in the House of Representatives. Uh, in the House, there's I think at least 70 Republicans, Michelle Bachman, people like that. They're pushing Boehner to invoke this thing that I hadn't heard of. It's the Hastert rule, which basically it means the Republicans, the majority, has a conference, and a majority of them have to agree on the bill before it's brought forward. 
So they're trying to slow this down and say, hold on, maybe we don't need to move so quickly on this, even though the Democrats think so. Obamacare, what happened there? The Democrats said, we need health care reform. The Republicans said, okay, okay, let's go ahead and, uh, you know, let's let's Throw something together. Here. Yeah. I've heard this saying, I don't know who said it, but I, I, I love it. The Republicans have always been doing this. The Democrats say, hey, we need X done. And the Republicans say no. And the Democrats say, Republicans hate old people. And the Republicans <laughs> say, well, yeah, let's talk about it. Let's right. come up with an alternative. Let's, let's, let's How work about this out. not? When a fireman goes to a fire, mm-hmm. they put the fire out. Yeah. They don't feel the need to replace it with something. Sometimes a bad idea is just a bad idea. Right. Immigration reform? No. It's that simple. We don't need amnesty. These 11 million that are here illegal are here illegally. We can secure the borders, how, and then we'll talk about how to handle the ones that are already here illegally. How much more can we handle as a country? How many more people can we accommodate in our country? And especially when all of these people end up on the Democrat voter roll. We have finite resources. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, th- I think we need to be careful because this will broaden. It'll turn the United States into California, first of all. Well, and that's a bad thing. It, it will completely broaden the Democratic voter base for the Democrats. But the thing is, is, even the Democrats who can say, you know, we're going to get all these people in here. They're going to vote for us and we're going to stay in power. At some point, they have to realize that we cannot substantiate this you know these amount of people we can't afford I mean, an extra we just can't afford it on welfare i mean and obamacare and everything else you're right we can't we're already broke i mean obama's talking about in such a rich nation how the hell do you think we're rich we're not we're not we're 17 no. trillion dollars no. in debt no that's it's that it's, is not rich that's propaganda but again it's break time two four eight yeah. four five five odds at oddshow.com we'll be right back Red State Talk Radio. The idea of government taking over health care is enough to make you sick. The conservative voice. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the Total Transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-800-257-2873. 1-800-257-2873. 1-800-257-2873. That's 1-800-257-2873. Great shot, Bob. I think you're on. I just followed your lead. Hey, by the way, did you break ground on your new building? No way. I'm holding off until I see what the future holds. <laughs> so you're seeing a fortune teller? Or you something? know what I mean. Things look a little uncertain. The only thing certain in business is if you're not growing, you're losing. And we just opened our fifth facility last week. If you're following my lead, you'll call General Steel. Their pre-engineered steel buildings could save you as much as half the cost compared to conventional buildings. And they're up in nearly half the time and back with a 50-year structural warranty. Yeah, but steel buildings... Hey, you've seen my building. Does it look like steel? No, it looks great. Ask about rebates that could save you up to $20,000. Look, you can stop paying rent and own a building that suits your business better and probably saves you money by operating more efficiently. In times like these, don't stop spending, just spend wisely. 800-398-8309-800-398-8309-800-398-8309-800-398-8309-800-398-8309. Red State Talk Radio. Why spend more than you have to on your life insurance? Did you know that term life insurance rates have fallen over 60% in the last 15 years? At the Life Insurance Quote Line, we monitor the rates, features, and financial strength of hundreds of life insurance products. For example, a healthy 40-year-old can protect his family with a half million dollars of 10-year level term for less than $20 a month. 
Rates for women are even lower. And don't forget to ask us about the new term life policies that guarantee your money back even if you don't die. Since 1986, we've helped tens of thousands of people just like you save a fortune on their life insurance. Why not find out how much you can save? Write down this number and call today for your free quote. One five-minute call is all it takes. Call 800-610-3497. 800-610-3497. That's 800-610-3497. Rates, policy forms, and availability vary by state. And you're listening to At Odds with Nate and Brian. I'm Brian. I'm Nate. Who are you? Nate. Nate who? Nate that you can contact at 248-455-ODDS. Please call in, make comments, suggestions, uh, you know, whatever you want. We're thick-skinned. You can call us whatever. I got nothing. What? I got nothing either. Let's talk about patriots versus uh, traitors. Obama. Who's a traitor and who's a patriot? I'm, I'm and who list decides? Some names and you're going to tell me your first thought. Okay, go ahead. Obama. Traitor. Holder. Eric Holder. Traitor. Hillary Clinton. Traitor. Ronald Reagan. Patriot. Ah. George H. W. Bush. Yeah, middle of the yeah, line. That's a token. That's a, same with, <laughs> it's same a little wishy washy there. Same I don't with know. W. Yeah. Uh, how about uh, Edward Snowden? Yeah, you know what? It, I I had I had notes taken and I was ready. To discuss this? today to talk about this yeah. to, to say what I've said before. On and then other you shows. realize that the NSA contacted you and said, "Don't talk about it." And for a reason I can't disclose. Yes, we're going to have to skip this topic. And, and we're going to bring you the... uh, Popeye the Sailor Man. <laughs> what we're actually going to play is the Sesame Street cartoon or no, show no. that they actually made to help children cope with a parent being in prison. I don't believe. Did that. you see that? You no. don't believe it? No, it's absolutely true. Really? Absolutely true. Yeah. I have not seen that. Sesame Street, coping with an incarcerated parent. Or something like that. Absolutely. Okay. What to do if mommy or daddy are in prison. You don't have that, though. I don't have it, but it talks about things like, well, sometimes if a mommy or daddy breaks a rule called a law, uh-huh. they go to prison or jail right, for a while. Right, right. It doesn't talk about how that was bad and they shouldn't have broken the law. Or Well, I agree with that. I they, mean, some laws are just and some laws are unjust. Do we need Sesame Street? To explain this to our children. Apparently so. Yeah. I mean... Do we need a publicly funded Big Bird stepping up there and telling you... Your daddy's in jail. Hi, guys. Your mommy's in prison, and I'm really sorry. Yeah. She nobody should, knows if I'm a male she, or female. She shouldn't have, she shouldn't have hit that Mr. Policeman <laughs> <laughs> with the ironing board. <laughs> That's very bad. Well, anyways. Edward Snowden. Okay. When I first saw this, thought, chicka, chicka, ching, ching, great. Ching, ching, he, he was Hong he, Kong. He he was he's in Hong Kong now. Yeah. Well, he he went to Hong maybe Kong, we think we don't know where he is. He resurfaced he's today a or slippery yesterday. Fellow. Uh, in Hong Kong, talked to a Chinese newspaper. What he did was he 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 released information. About Wait a minute, who do you work for? Uh, Some private yeah, company private that company. worked was, for the government. Right, he was a contractor for the NSA. Yeah. So he supposedly had a security clearance, had access to things, had proof that the NSA was, in fact, collecting metadata on all American citizens, working with all these tech companies. He came out, helped with the PRISM and some other scandals, uh, and went public with it. Unlike a lot of whistleblowers, he went public, came out, talked to the, the Guardian, the UK Guardian, and I think the Washington Post. Well, I th- and, and I think time will tell whether he's a traitor or a patriot. I, I think I mean, so. Some, some people it, are saying, you know, he, he's he's a traitor because he went to a foreign media uh, group. The Guardian. Yeah, the, and, the group that actually isn't beholden to the U.S. government. And and I'm and I'm wondering that um, perhaps he did that to protect. American media sources, because if he'd gone to the Washington Post or he'd gone to the New York Times or Here's some other thing. group, I think he did. They so, could have gone uh, to jail as traitors. So, I think he went to the Washington Post. Or I don't something know. first and didn't really like the way they were treating him or something. I heard that. I, I'm not sure. I can't really back that with much. But 
he's in Hong Kong, talks to the Guardian. What he came out and just recently did, though, that I, I am not like? sure about it yet. Okay. He, he told a Chinese newspaper that the U.S. government has been hacking Yay. several Chinese sites, yeah, including the University of China or something That's in Hong probably Kong. not a good thing. That's... Now, and I, I said on on another show that he... thinks he does talk too much. I said on another show that he is not Bradley Manning, the military guy that leaked oh, yeah. everything he knew to WikiLeaks and just said, here's everything about the wars that I know. That's right. dangerous. Yeah. That's going to get people killed. Coming out and saying the NSA spies on Americans probably isn't going to get anybody killed. No. Other than himself he's going to be well killed. no wait a minute let's, he's let's... going to commit suicide sooner or later no <laughs> I, I, he he will be found in I a closet he, hanging himself with pornography all around he, his I feet i think he knows no, that no i um no he could get people killed because you know the argument is that he has now made it public that the united states national security advisory whatever uh are spying on everybody to fight terrorism, and now uh, he's compromised that national security. And now, when the um, Saudis uh, get a bunch of pilots together and they fly into the Sears Tower or other tall buildings, Willis Tower, you mean? Willis Tower? Yeah, the Willis Tower. I mean, get it right. I don't know. It's been the Willis Tower for like five years. Really? Yeah. Oh, boy, I'm getting old. The The thing is, you know, one could argue, well, now he's endangered American, you know, citizens and American lives. One could argue but, that, and the one that could argue that would be the same people that are in this book I have right here, 1984. George saying, Orwell. we're just doing it for your safety. Whose uh, sales went through the roof you, in the last week. If you give up liberty... For a little bit of perceived security, right. you will get and deserve neither. neither. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a false argument. Well, I agree with you. Yeah, you can make that argument, but I can argue a lot of things about flying monkeys and unicorns. Right. I've seen The Wizard of Oz. I think the idea of the United States and individual liberty and individual freedoms is the thing that has made the United States unique in world history, nowhere else Absolutely. has a government and a state, the United States of America, been more um, involved in protecting the individual's freedom. Nowhere. Yeah, not only are They've we They've been unique, collective. We're unique because of that. Yeah. It's also what makes us hated by people who don't I, have that I luxury. I think so. That's, that's not our fault, and that doesn't mean we should change what we're doing. Yep. Now, I'm going to play a clip. This is James Clapper, under oath, testifying in front of Congress How in, long? in March. Okay, in March. He was the uh, director of uh, uh, national intelligence. Does the NSA collect any type of data at all on millions or hundreds of millions of Americans? No, sir. It does not. Not wittingly. There are cases where they could in inadvertently, perhaps, uh, collect, but not, not wittingly. Oh, so the NSA is inadvertently collecting phone records, Oopsie. internet records, every other sort of records on every American citizen. Oopsie. Now, Oop now, now what he did, let's give him the... Uh, the fair shake here. Okay. He came out and said that he gave the least untruthful answer he could. Oh, wait a minute. So what he did was he lied. Parse that again. But he Where lied. We, we, <laughs> the least untruthful answer. The least untruthful. Least untruthful. Yeah. Which well, that's, means that's the what, closest to the truth. That's what I tell my but wife. Not the truth. Yeah. And the argument is this was all classified. It was a state secret. You can't know about it. My argument is, if it's unconstitutional and you work for the most transparent administration in the history of this country, you should be right. able to divulge things like that. Yeah, this has probably been the most closed and, uh, oh, I don't know. Tyrannical? Okay. Communist? Yeah. Marxist? Maybe. Dangerous? Yeah. Dictatorshipedness? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Administration yeah. ever. It's bad. Worst 
president ever. It's it's bad. It is time to stand up peacefully and assert your rights and say no, what you're doing is wrong. Yeah. It's getting worse every single day. And today I it's don't scary. care if you're taking assault weapons because I have my shotgun. Tomorrow it's your shotgun. Today, right. hey, you know, you're not bugging me because I'm not a terrorist. Tomorrow you're a terrorist. Right, and, and we're going to get into that a little bit when, uh, you know, people are asked, well, you know, the government is just listening to everything you do for your benefit. And if you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to worry about. Yeah. And I and I see that and I go, oh, you know... Yeah. Yeah. That's all I have to Lindsay say. Graham, but two four eight four five five odds two four eight four five five six three three seven. The voice of American conservatism, WRS Digital Red State Talk Radio. Fact: U.S. credit card debt is eight times larger than it was 30 years ago. No wonder you and I are feeling the credit card crunch. You're not alone. Increasing prices and the costs of credit are stretching budgets and preventing people just like us from getting ahead or just catching up with our debts. At American Financial Debt Relief, we can help. We have tested ways to help you get out of debt. Find out how now. The call is free to learn more. If you qualify, we can reduce your interest, show you how to stop your debt from getting larger, and help you get out of debt faster than you can by making minimum payments. So if you're falling behind on your credit cards or medical bills, give us a call right now, where a free five-minute call can change your life. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Reduce your credit card debt. Call now. 800-978-4815. 800-978-4815. Real radio for real Americans. Red State Talk Radio. Obama wants your money, and he's determined to get it. He wants your money to buy off unions, his Wall Street cronies, and to expand the Obama welfare nation. Well, Swiss America is determined to stop him from stealing your money. They want to send you an award-winning film, I Want Your Money, on DVD that exposes his plan. It'll help keep the government's hands off your money using gold, silver, and other hard asset strategies to protect your hard-earned money. Call today and request the DVD, I Want Your Money, normally $19.95, yours absolutely free. Let Swiss America show you how to use gold, silver, and other hard assets to protect your hard-earned money. Call now, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call Swiss America right now. Learn all about investing in gold, 800-932-5146, 800-932-5146. Call now. And we're back. I'm Brian. I'm Nate. And you're listening to At Odd Show. Hey, um, I want to play something real quick that I, I just found. One of our one of our faithful listeners actually sent it to me. Okay. Hope I have it queued up in the right spot. But what's incarcerated? And why was your dad in it? Incarcerated is when someone breaks the law, a, a grown up rule, and then they have to go to jail or prison. That's part of the Sesame, Sesame Street. Street. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's carcerated? Carcerated. Carcerated is where my dad murdered somebody, and yeah. he's in prison, kiddies. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's going to be there a long, long, long time, at least uh, two or three years. But I get to visit him once a week. It, you know, as long as Mommy <laughs> doesn't meet, uh, you know, Uncle Bill. <laughs> <laughs> it's not... The situation isn't funny. There no. are children, and it's, it's horrible. almost never the children's fault. Right. So right. It, it, we, I, I do feel for the children, and right. they need some way to handle this. And maybe Sesame Street can help with that. It's just unfortunate that every child can't have two parents that can handle this sort of thing you know, and deal with it. It's a far cry from what I remember Sesame Street being, which was... 
the letter today is L. Count. Ca- yeah. You know. Yeah. One, two, three. I guess three. he did numbers. I was thinking of the other thing where he, he did the number of the day was joint. He was smoking pot. That wasn't actually Sesame Street. No, that, that was wasn't. Hilarious. That's why Daddy's incarcerated. It was Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I was talking to a coworker. <laughs> Nate, Nate's falling on the floor laughing. And, uh, you know, I, we were discussing about the uh, NSA surveillance on everything. And, and you know, he's a, a 38-year-old guy. And uh, Mary's got a, I don't know, two-year-old kid. And he goes, what? I don't, I don't care if the government listens to what I say or anything. I have, I have nothing to hide. I'm, I'm a good guy. Why, why should I care, you know, if it's for the security of the country? And I don't know. We've got six or seven reasons why people should oppose the surveillance of their private affairs. And we, we talked a little bit about, and I was trying to convince them. I said, you know, you need a warrant to listen to somebody's telephone line, right? And he goes, well, yeah. No. And I said, okay. he goes, but, you know, cell phones and all that stuff, that's, those are radio waves, and those don't belong to anybody, and the government can do whatever they want to radio waves. And I go, just because the technology changes, the philosophy and the idea of the government listening to your personal communications should remain the same. And he couldn't seem to handle that. The other point that gets overlooked quite a bit, too, is even if it was perfectly legal, there's a difference between legality and right morality. And morality. Yeah. If it's wrong, it's wrong, legal or not. Which was kind of Rand Paul's point with Obamacare after John Boehner put the wrong coat on that day or turned his coat inside out or something and voted with the liberals and made Obamacare legal. Rand Paul, I think it was, said unconstitutional is unconstitutional. It is legal now. Still not right. Right. And I think you and I agree on that. There are unconstitutional laws. There's unjust laws that are enforced. And we must... Uh, disobey yep. and we must fight those laws well, one of the things was you know none of us uh obey the laws technically speaking we're all criminals we all do things that are against the laws there's so many laws out there and they create more laws every day that you know when you say something inadvertently or innocently in a communication or whatever, could technically be against the law, and that could be used against you to incarcerate you. We don't always know what those things are. All right, that's that's the first thing. Now, number two, Obama may only hunt terrorists today. But who knows what the next president or the next president or the next president will do with the same types of laws. Maxine Waters, she has a very big mouth and she has a way of saying things that probably she shouldn't be saying. She came out a long time ago and said that Obama's building the biggest database we've ever seen in history no, of yeah. information yeah. on all these people. It's going to blow be great. your mind. Now, I think she was talking about like Obamacare yeah. or, or I, uh, no, uh, uh, organizing for action or Obama for America or whatever group you want to call it. But I mean, this is the kind of thing. Political action that, group. And I've heard, and I agree that this is kind of setting Obama up to have influence for the next 30 years because he, he's gaining all this access and what's he going to do with it? He's going to help out, you know, future Democrats. And, and the thing is, you know, today it's terrorists and we're protecting you from terrorists, but why not drug dealers or sex offenders or, same-sex couples or whatever might be illegal, either at the state level or the federal level, tax evaders, whatever, they could potentially go after anybody with this information. Uh, Number three, uh, administrative, using it illegally. This happens. President Bush used surveillance powers inappropriately. The New York governor Elliot Spitzer targeted political opponents with state surveillance. And that's what I talked to my coworker about. I said, what if a political person in power was going after 
his adversaries and collecting data inappropriately uh, Mitch to McConnell's use against him. was bugged, right? I mean, that's kind of the same thing. And the thing is, you know, the, the, the fallacy of, well, I've got nothing to hide. Well, you know, when you shut the door to the bathroom, you know, what are you hiding? You don't have anything to hide. When you lock your door at night, what are you hiding? Um, what about your kids? You want to protect your kids, a certain amount of privacy there. You talk about uh, stuff with your kids. You want to protect that. But that's all out there. Everything is out there. Everything you say in an email, on a cell phone, on Facebook is out there. The bit, the, the, the real thing is the government is made of people, right? And some people are creepy and petty and competent or dangerous. You know, there was a case of the guy that was using uh, inside information to, to try to find people that he could eat. There was a New York I think yeah, it was a new yep, yep. police I saw, officer. I saw that. Um, it doesn't have to be the government. It can be the employees of the government, the agents Edward of the government. Edward Snowden, who supposedly had access to all of this data. Right. He could find things about you and use it against you. And, you know, we know that the federal government has abused powers in the past. And technology and law enforcement, as technology grows, where do we draw the line? You know, it used to be if you wanted to follow somebody, you had to assign a detective to them, and they would follow you all around. Well, now your GPS, your your phone, your computers, and all that stuff, they know exactly where you're going. Those are all things that we need to consider to to uh, to determine whether yeah, we I want mean, the e government. Even if you're not a terrorist, even if you think yeah. you're completely safe and have nothing to hide, you should still, at the very least care about my right not to be watched the the smallest minority is the individual yeah and yeah. that's what this country was about the individual not the collective good yeah. so well, all right that's all i have to say about yeah that. we're running out of time here for for one of our affiliates i don't know if brian if you want to we can go on a little bit more. A little bit more. Okay, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back if you want to stick with us. If not, you know, we understand because Brian's boring. We get it. All right. Until then, bye bye. Thanks for listening. Hello. You're listening to the At Odd Show with Nate and Brian. <laughs> Red State Talk Radio. The idea of government taking over health care is enough to make you sick. The conservative voice. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step -step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the Total Transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-800-257-2873. 1-800-257-2873. One eight hundred two five seven two eight seven three. 257 2873 that's 1-800-257-2873. Great shot, Bob. I think you're on. I just followed your lead. Hey, by the way, did you break ground on your new building? No way. I'm holding off until I see what the future holds. <laughs> so you're seeing a fortune teller or You something? know what I mean. Things look a little uncertain. The only thing certain in business is if you're not growing, you're losing. And we just opened our fifth facility last week. If you're following my lead, you'll call General Steel. Their pre-engineered steel buildings could save you as much as half the cost compared to conventional buildings, and they're up in nearly half the time, and back with a 50-year structural warranty. Yeah, but steel buildings... Hey, you've seen my building. Does it look like steel? No, it looks great. Ask about rebates that could save you up to $20,000. Look, you can stop paying rent and own a building that suits your business better and probably saves you money by operating more efficiently. In times like these, don't stop spending, just spend wisely. 800-398-8309, 800-398-8309, 800-398-8309, 800-398-8309. Red State Talk Radio.
Why spend more than you have to on your life insurance? Did you know that term life insurance rates have fallen over 60% in the last 15 years? At the Life Insurance Quote Line, we monitor the rates, features, and financial strength of hundreds of life insurance products. For example, a healthy 40-year-old can protect his family with a half million dollars of 10-year level term for less than $20 a month. Rates for women are even lower. And don't forget to ask us about the new term life policies that guarantee your money back even if you don't die. Since 1986, we've helped tens of thousands of people just like you save a fortune on their life insurance. Why not find out how much you can save? Write down this number and call today for your free quote. One five-minute call is all it takes. Call 800-610-3497. 800-610-3497. That's 800-610-3497. Rates, policy forms, and availability vary by state. And we're back. You're listening to the Ad Out Show. You can still call in 248-455-ODDS or email us, talk at adoddshow.com. Brian, you love Chris Matthews, right? You watch MSNBC. He's my hero. Every day of your life. Yeah, he's my hero. One of big forehead. One of the, <laughs> it was smaller when he was younger. Probably uh, was. He still has that tingle going up his leg though. Every time he hears Barack Obama, not so talk. much anymore. He said that. No, yeah, he yeah. did say that. But uh, I actually posted something that I got a similar feeling. I I heard Milton Friedman talking, and there was a tingle. No, <laughs> okay, but Milton Friedman's been dead for a while. <laughs> Oh, uh, YouTube that might explain the tingle. It was a ghost. <laughs> okay. No, Chris Matthews. Oh, he has this big thing about Republicans and people on the right using dog whistle words that are racist. Okay. Words like Chicago. Ooh. Welfare. Ooh. Apartment. Ooh. All of these words that if you use them in a sentence ever and you're a Republican. It means you're a racist. Hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, he knows that because he's smarter than everybody else. I didn't learn that in sociology class in college. Yeah, which is weird because Chris Matthews teaches sociology in college. Every college. He does? Yeah. You didn't have him? Professor I, I, Matthews? I, I, I no, I don't think him. he does. But no. no, he was talking about Ted Cruz, freshman senator from Texas, and compared him to a Nazi supporter. Really? Yeah. And, and, and said, and he falls right in, into that group with McCarthy. Uh, Pat Buchanan and Father, m- 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 whatever. I don't know. I don't know what you're saying, but Bill O'Reilly, sure. Uh, those those sort of people, and what he says, which isn't racist at all, mind you, because he's a Democrat. They all have that black Irish look about them, huh? You know the the Irish, which are the, what he means are, is are they're the blacks white, of they're Europe. White conservatives is what he means. Oh, people hated the Irish. Yeah, I understand, but you're telling me that's not a racist, re- blatantly racist? Absolutely. A bit more racist than me saying somebody is on welfare and lives in an apartment in Chicago? I could never see I... Bill O'Reilly saying something like that. <laughs> no. <laughs> or Pat Buchanan. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Or Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz. No, is a very Ted Cruz. Ir- is he Cuban? No, uh, is Ted Cruz Canadian? is not Isn't he Irish. Canadian? No, no. He's Cuban or something. He no. will be a good candidate in 2016, Filipino, I think. by the way. Yeah. Ted Cruz. No, he's, he's too. Looking he's pretty good. He's too. Uh, he and his brother Tom Cruz are um, not. Uh, he's too uh, young as a. Yeah, conservative. no, you're he's right. Tom Cruz is actually backing all the liberals. Yeah, so. I don't. I don't know. I, th- I think he would be an okay. He would be an okay. Uh, what about thing. Chris well, Matthews and Ted Cruz? He just is trying to villainize. Oh, absolutely, is what he's doing. This is after Joe Biden came out and said, I can't believe that these freshman senators have such, you know, so uh, much power over the rest of the Republicans. Well, and his point is that they're a freshman senator. It's their first year there. They shouldn't be able to do anything good or worthwhile. I think he's forgetting that he ran as vice president with a freshman senator during a presidential election. Huh. Anyway, oh, I... while, while we're on liberal talk show hosts, Pierce Morgan, and I wish I had the clip to this. My he, hero and your mentor. Your hero, Pierce Morgan, from Men- CNN. Mentor. Originally from England, but they don't no. want him there. I thought it was from Massachusetts. 
Yeah, he he was originally in huh. England, though. Massachusetts, England. The motherland? It's pretty much the same thing. Socialism is The socialism. motherland? He was talking about a case recently where uh, I, I think she was like 72 years old. He's starting to change his uh, old woman. Well, mind a little bit about the Second yeah, Amendment, I, I, just a touch. He's being an idiot. But, yeah. uh, he's a rating this older whore. woman in her house. Someone's trying to break in. She has a husband, 84-year-old husband or something in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She grabs a three fifty seven Magnum, Ooh, so my the favorite. story goes. But yeah. we know how accurate these are about, you know, when we see stories about guns. and doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter. She had a weapon. She fired a warning shot. Mm-hmm. And as Pierce Morgan says it, bullet bent went whizzing by the guy's ear. Ooh. This warning shot. So and he would know that how? I, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, and he's saying, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. This is what the Second Amendment is all about. Really? It's the- about an old woman being able to have a firearm in her own home and being able to protect herself and her husband with it from an intruder. And if that happened in the UK, she would have been arrested and charged. Because we know of a lot of people that have defended themselves in the UK and actually shot intruders that were trying to kill I- people. And the people that shot them have been convicted and sentenced to prison time. Yeah, and I'll tell you, first of all, this this isn't what the Second Amendment was all about. Mm -mm. It was about much more than that. Tyranny. But where the hell did this come from, Mr. Nobody should own any guns. Right. Now, if she had used an assault weapon and done the exact same thing. And had more than, what, seven rounds? Yeah, do you think he would have supported it then? No. You don't think so? No. You think he would have said, he would this have is said, ridiculous. This he, is ridiculous. She almost killed that young man, yeah. even though she didn't kill him. She She's a nice Christian woman, and she she was apologized, but the, you can hear her on the 911 tape. She says, back up, you son of a beep. It's beep. really funny, and she's like, I don't usually swear, but he made me angry. She's <laughs> she's a good old granny. Yeah, I, I, I want a she's, granny like that. <laughs> that's what Ben Ferguson was on, was on with Pierce Morgan. He's a... A right wing extremist, right? Um, but not really. I'm not sure actually. what you mean by that. He's a talk show host. Wait a minute, right extremist? I uh, no, explain that. The NSA will explain it to you later. Okay, uh, <laughs> they're knocking he, on but, the door right he now. He said he said uh, that he wants her to adopt him. So. No, Stoughton isn't here. We're in Hong Kong, but he's not here. Okay, I I told him that he's in the room right yeah. behind us. Anyways, whatever. Yeah. So we've got a couple uh, couple liberal talk show hosts on on the same side that uh, have recently said things that are kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum here a little bit. Isn't it amazing? So I don't know what's going on with Pierce Morgan other than his ratings are almost zero. Yeah. They're about as close to zero as any talk show ever gets. So very similar to ours. Right, but we're not being fired. No, but we are being monitored. <laughs> we are. We are. <laughs> and so is Pierce Morgan. I don't know about that. Um, you had this thing about roadblocks in St. Clair Bibb counties in yeah, Alabama. In Alabama. Alabama. Well, you know, this Were is, they looking for drunks? This, no, this was kind of confusing. At first it came out, it was uh, St. Clair and Bibb counties were confirming that they were, had roadblocks at several locations in their counties. Uh, and they were uh, asking for blood and DNA samples. However, the samples were voluntary and motorists were paid for them as part of a study. This was a study apparently done by the National Traffic Highway Safety Administration. I would give my DNA for money. They wanted to see how many people were driving under the influence of alcohol or prescription drugs. And they were paying up to $50 for a blood sample and $10 for a mouth swab. All right? And it was an ongoing study. But why are we using taxpayers' dollars to conduct a study by the National Traffic Highway Safety Administration and using police pulling people over and asking if we can swab or stick a needle in your arm to collect blood to see if you're under the influence. Now, they claimed it was all anonymous. I don't know if that's <laughs> We have true. your DNA, but this is, we, yeah. this is completely anonymous. But the thing is... We only know everything about your genetic yeah, makeup. Yeah, right now. And you're going to have cancer when you're 23, and uh, you know your kids are going to be ugly. Unfortunately, we can't <laughs> tell you because it's anonymous. Yeah, your kids are going to be ugly, and we can't help you. 
Apparently, uh, a spokesman came out and said, "Hey, uh, we we didn't we didn't collect any DNA, but but we're taking information. Uh, we asked for a breath sample, or an oral fluid sample, or a blood sample, but no DNA was taken. So I'm wondering, Nate, why did they take a mouth swab if they're not collecting DNA?" How exactly? And what do, do they you, get from a mouth swab? Yeah, how do you how do you take anything from a person's body and not get DNA from it? I don't know. I'm wondering myself. Hmm. So the thing is, my point I think is this is indoctrination. This is getting people used to having roadblocks and road checks, as we've talked about in other shows. Getting people to used to the fact that you will succumb and submit to the government because we're here to protect you, and it's all for your benefit, and don't ask questions, and we're just going to do a little, little swabby, and everything's just hunky-dory, and just go about your day. And it's not really a big intrusion. It's just, you know, a few minutes of your time. It, yeah, it, it takes but a light touch. But what happens to the data? That's the stuff. Yeah, that's the, the, the data. Uh, what happens to the data? Data is or they data? Store it. It's data, and they store it. It's data forever, and they never, ever, 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 ever look at yours unless you're a terrorist, or you're a homosexual, or you're a uh, you know a person that might be talking about how tyrannical the government is, or your blah 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 tea party member or you just listed whatever. a lot of things about yourself i think they must be looking at your data <laughs> oh they have my they have my number and my dna and you know what it came back you as at this uh this it, roadblock it came back as genius and we've <laughs> talked several times on this show about no. the competence of the federal government oh yeah and how they're usually wrong about things so I believe that it came back as as genius. Well, that was that was frightening, but you know, anything for scientific research, which I'm not opposed to, but I don't know why the federal government should be stopping people and asking for that kind of crap. Um, they asked. I don't know. It just it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. White privilege. What's that mean to you, Nate? White privilege. It uh. I don't know. It means that whites are privileged. Privileged. Yeah. I, I mean, think of all the advantages you have because you're white. I I, I do. I you thank know. God every day that I'm a male white man. Yeah. Do you? Male, white man. White male man. Male man. <laughs> Something like that. This they had a conference called the White Privilege Conference. Did they? Another reminder that many teachers are in the business of political indoctrination. I had a discussion with this with a coworker as well. Anyways, there do were you two... work at work or do you just talk to your coworker? I just talk about, about political politics. stuff, and uh, you yeah, know that's good. Hey, my work is all mental because I'm a genius. Yeah, I'm. I two thousand people. You should be really thankful to the people that pay your salary. I am. Thank you, Nate. You're welcome. And all the people of the state of Michigan. I wasn't. Wasn't, Anyways, wasn't uh, doing that, but okay. I know 2000 people from 41 states, including many educators uh, gathered in Seattle. Oh, my goodness. That's the San Francisco of the north in April for the white privilege conference. Number 14. I guess they've had, you know, 13 others. White privilege. What does that mean? It means that white Americans, due to their status as the majority race, uh, Enjoy rights, benefits, and opportunities that racial minorities do not. Well, that may be true, but the idea of our republic is that the individual is the smallest minority, whether they're black, green, white, purple, blue, whatever, that they have certain rights. But this conference involved much more than the concept of white privilege. It involved three days of bashing the U.S., uh, uh, the United States, its history, bashing white Americans and the Christian faith, which, you know, I can take or leave, the concept of hard work and our free enterprise economic system, which I do believe in. You know, these educators gathered to share their general disapproval of our nation and express their shame about, 
being Americans. I'm so ashamed of being American in the greatest country in the whole freaking world, and, and no greater country has ever existed in the history of mankind, but they got a bitch about it they because really, they have guilt. And tell me if you've heard this before. Their main goal is to fundamentally transform this country into something that it's not currently. Well, it says that right here in my notes. Their ultimate goal seems to be an eventual transformation. Okay, never mind. Of the nation I'm into sorry. the type of socialist, but most authoritarian was the state unmistakable message they seem that to these prefer. Received. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, you're such a dink. Uh, but most frightening was the unmistakable message that these educators received that they should carry this revolutionary message back to the children they teach in their hometowns. Yeah, so ultimately they had this big conference to yeah. talk about how bad the United States of America is. Oh, horrible. How whites are privileged, oh. and we shouldn't worry about opportunity, strive, and ability. What we should worry about is having equal outcome no matter what. Right, because equal is great. Equal rights, equal outcome, equal opportunity, equal benefit, equal success, equal, equal, equal. Well, I agree that everybody should start out on the same basic platform, the same base. No. And that That's they should be able to try to strive to to do what they can do. But the problem is people aren't equal. Look, we, nobody's going to start in the same spot either. That's not possible. No. That's not why this country was founded. That's not what we want. What we do want is to go back to where we were which is you have the right and the freedom and the opportunity to be as successful as your ability mm -hmm. and as you want to be. Right. And the government shouldn't get in the way of that. No. Right. But the problem is they're trying to create this future generation of social radicals, you know, right under the parents' noses. There was a speaker there who described the American capitalism as a death cult, and corporations are fascist in nature. I don't think he understands what fascist means. That's, you know, that's a government-controlled economic platform. That's not what capitalism is. He said the free enterprise system is inhumane, undemocratic, and um, unsustainable. Do you believe that? No, you, it's actually you, the only humane and sustainable system that I've ever seen. Socialism is not sustainable by any means. It's been shown throughout history that socialism does not work. It cannot stand. Mr. Jensen's went on to say that capitalism forces people to maximize the worst part of yourself. Greed. I, I wish and this, th Good this is Lord. funny because this goes back to what I, I made the joke earlier about the tingle going up my leg when I heard Milton Friedman talk. Mm -hmm. This was the clip that I was actually referring to. He was asked by somebody, I don't remember who it was, about do you really think greed is a good thing? And he said, even the communist nations, tell me one area in this world that is not run on greed. You can't. Everything, humans are greedy. Everything is run on greed. Greed is not the problem. The problem is where the greed is and what the freedom you have to try to support and, and fulfill that greed. I mean, in a communist, in a dictatorship, it's the greed of one person. They're greedy. They right. want all of the power. Right. In a free enterprise system, free market capitalism, like we need in the United States, the greed is spread across the entire everybody population. Everybody has their own individual right. greed, and the entire society is raised because of that greed and because right. of everybody's strive to do better, earn more. You know, and it's not just money. Whatever you're looking for. Whatever your greed is driving you towards. Well, I'm just going to add that this jerk said that the rich people have a lot of problems. A lot of moral problems. Partly because they have no souls. 
capitalists are not human. And I think, really? I think generally that's really. Me. I'm bionic. Good God. I am bionic, so I think that's that's partially not human. Because I want to create a business and make a profit and make my life and my family's life better. I have no soul, and I'm not human. Here's the irony. I think it's just the opposite. I think the definition of humanity is to try to make yourself better. How much do you think? And have more. How much do you think Bob Jensen charges to give a speech at a seminar like this? Free. Do you think so? I, it's got to be he free, right? He has to. Right? It's got to be free. I, I, that's interesting, and we should try to look into that and see if we can. Because <laughs> I I would bet that he makes money on this sort of no, thing. No, he, can, he can't because he would have no soul if he tried to make Are money. Are you kidding me? No, he, he look at all of the socialists. That, Bob has a soul, damn it! Look at all of the socialists that hate capitalism and hate the free market. They're all rich themselves. Yeah, I know it. I mean, not all of them, but the, the a, Warren a Buffett. You know, yeah. I mean, those types of people. They're all rich. Yeah. I know, I know. It, they got it's, rich. The hypocrisy is, is oozing up and spilling out all over the place. Aye. All right. Now, another workshop by Daniel Lee and Carrie Fox taught attendees that breaking the law in any given circumstance isn't necessarily bad. I agree with that. There are unjust laws, and we should sometimes break those laws, but we suffer the consequences of that. That's what civil, dis civil disobedience is all about, right? People who follow the laws don't get anywhere in life. I don't know about that. And the U.S. Constitution was written for the specific benefit of white, property-owning Christian males. I disagree with that. I think the Constitution was written about everybody because yeah. it applies to everybody. Everybody has certain rights, whether they're rich, poor, black, white, Christian, Muslim, Jewish, whatever, the Constitution protects the rights of the individual. Not only that, we amended it to be very, very clear, because it apparently wasn't clear before, to be very clear that rights cannot be given or taken away based on race. That's right in there, very clear. I would bet that these people who talk about the Constitution have never read the Constitution. Or, if they read it, they didn't or, understand it. And it's not complicated, so that says something about them. Right. They also go on to criticize the uh, NAACP, the National Association of Advancement of Colored People, because they believe it does not advance the interests of black people, but simply recruits them into the white culture. B.S., yeah, it recruits them into the American dream, the American ideology, the American I, idea that the individual is the most important thing. Are you kidding me? What? The NAACP? No, I don't know. Are what? you serious? What? They're one of the biggest racist organizations there is. They're extremely hypocritical. They were founded. This isn't me. This is what they're saying. It is? Yeah, they said... They said BS, the NAACP, recruits them into the American dream. That's what the they said it is. Rights. That, that that's wrong. Because they believe it does not advance the interests of black people, but simply recruits them into white culture. Okay, and tell me your take on it again. My, my take is, um, well, I right or wrong, I don't think they're trying to recruit them into white culture. I think that... No, absolutely not. The idea is that the United States was founded on the idea of the individual. Again, I'm going to go back to that. That's very important. The smallest minority is the individual. We have to protect that. Everybody has certain rights, and a government needs to recognize what those rights are. It's not the greatest good for the greatest number because the greatest number might be all wolves looking at sheep and wondering what we can eat for dinner. Right? Yeah, uh, okay, that's fine. It, and that I'll, the free I'll, enterprise, I'll just... this was uh, Paul Cavell argued that free enterprise is designed to punish the poor and reward the rich. Well, you know what? A lot of the people that started out in the free enterprise 
Um, you mean the rich? No, the, a lot of people that started out with free enterprise started out poor, and they became rich. So I don't know how you can reward the rich and punish the poor. And that capitalistic economic systems uses Christianity as a tool to keep the working class from rebelling. Employees are fed that the myth that they, if they work hard, God will bless them and allow them to advance economically and socially. I don't know if that's true, but I got to say, if you work hard and you come up with great ideas, that you will be generally rewarded with economic yeah, this rewards. Is, this is their attack on the trickle-down theory, which nobody has really ever proposed, but it is kind of how it works, that the rich are rich. They employ people who make money, who make goods that other people buy that allows the rich to get richer and employ more people that they pay to have a job. I mean, I don't know anybody that's not self-employed, that doesn't have a job because of somebody richer than them. I really don't. Yeah, I think that's true. Think about it. I mean, in, we have great companies like Walmart. They employ millions of people, like one and a half million people in the U.S., I think. They're hiring more and more every day, which, by the way, they just announced that they will, from now on, only hiring temporary employees. Because um, of the Obamacare. And they said it's not... It's not cost cutting. It's to ensure they have adequate staffing, but it's right. because of Obamacare, right? Essentially. Well, I'm not talking about Walmart. I'm talking about the guy who started Walmart. Yeah, I don't know Sam. Sam Walton. I don't know if he was rich or not. He wasn't. But at some point, <laughs> he became rich. Right. And and everybody in the United States it used to be could have that opportunity Absolutely. to come up with a business or some kind of services that they can provide and make a lot of money and benefit themselves and their family. That's the idea. And in doing so, you can help a lot of people along the way, and those are em employees that work for you. Hey, not everybody's going to be, uh, you know, um, uh Standard oil guy. That's true. Not everybody what, is. What? <laughs> but a lot of rich people. If you work they're not all going to be that. And try a little bit. You can be employed by him, and you can have a job and make a decent living. And the idea is that the dream is that maybe you can come up with something new and unique and make a lot. On of money. the other hand, you can just suck off of the people that make money, and they have to pay taxes to pay for your butt to sit on the couch. And then eventually they have no incentive to earn money anymore. And so they stop earning money. No more taxes. You're not getting food sitting on the couch. You're going to have to figure out some way to do. And that's socialism. That doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because eventually you run out of other people's money. Well, the conference was basically uh, sharing strategies to, to fool administrators and communities into thinking they are teaching about ethical and social standards when they are uh, really pursuing their idea of social justice indoctrination. Their goal is to make students into global citizens, you know, the UN, and teach social justice. White privilege is just a part of that larger agenda. And how do teachers manage to communicate, communicate these radical ideas without students becoming uneasy or parents noticing? It's all in the choice of words and delivery. And that takes us to the core curriculum. Common core. Common core. Common core, yeah. You were talking about some uh, examples that you came across in your school district about socialism and oh, uh, environment and economic yeah, stuff. talking about the free market and, and things and how they teach scarcity of resources. Oh, they yeah. They never that's right. once talk about abundance. Right. And I don't know how you can define scarcity without at least defining abundance we, I mean how do you you ha, because scarcity is relative what's it relative to and the opposite of scarcity is abundance mm -hmm. and we have resources like air that is very abundant air water oil abundant coal lots of stuff 
but they teach scarcity, and that's it. And uh, and this is all part of the common core crap. And that, it, that's it, trying to get any sort of common sense conservatism, any sort of right wing extremism out. Right. And and they they create all these story problems, whether they're math or social problems, and they use examples that have a socialist theme to it. You know, you have five apples. Why don't you give two apples to your neighbor? Or why are you hoarding all of your profit in your business yeah. <laughs> and uh, not giving it to the government or to your other uh, friends and family? I mean, those are the things that are going on in the public education. Yep. I think uh, I think that's about all the time we're going to take up for you, though. We do want to thank you for listening to our extended version of Ad Odds. Yeah. I don't know if this will be regular or not. We'll talk about it. And Send us some feedback. Let us know if you... I mean, we can even go longer. We don't run out of things to say. And Well, we do sometimes. I don't ever. No, you just go on and no, on. Go on and on. And on. So send us an email. Talk at adoddshow.com or like us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash adoddshow. Let us know You know what, what you'd like to hear. Our show is going to be an hour on Red State Talk Radio, but... Give us some ideas to can, talk about. We can go longer. Yeah, definitely yeah. ideas, pros, cons about the show. Should I actually fire Brian? Right, that's the big question. I might put a poll question up because on Facebook. Because I'm, I'm, I'm not I sure. really want to get out of this contract. Do you? Yeah, so if you can fire me, that'd be great. Yeah, I mean, I can probably work it out. I'm, I'm really help. Help? Help? I'm, uh, help? All right, well, that's all the time we have. I want to thank you for listening. All right, and uh, we'll see you. Bye-bye. <laughs>